tonight, we will stabilize Nigeria, restore order and rule of law, vows former chairman of EFCC Nuhu Ribadu as he assumes office as the national security advisor to the president. Newly appointed acting controller general of customs promises to intensify the fight against smuggling and raise the revenue profile of the country. And protests trail demolition of buildings and other structures by the Kano state government as Governor Abba Kabir sets up committee to receive complaints over the actions of his administration. On business news tonight, Nigeria becomes first African country to adopt financial reporting standards as NGX and Financial Reporting Council officially launch IFRS 1 and 2. On sports news tonight, world champion Tobi Amuso targets 100 meters hurdles triumph in under 12 seconds at the Golden Spike meet in Ostrava on Tuesday. And from Abuja, the nation's capital, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project advocates increased involvement of citizens in the anti-corruption fight to ensure accountability in government. We begin with the optimism coming from the former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Mr. Nuhuri Badu, who is promising that peace is set to return to the country as he officially assumed office in Abuja today as the National Security Advisor to the President. The retired Assistant Inspector General of Police took over from Major General Babagana Munguno, retired, who was the NSA under the administration of the immediate past President Muhammad Buhari. A statement from the office of the NSA explains that Mr. Ribadu took charge after a brief handover ceremony today, during which he promised to work towards securing the country from all forms of insecurity, such as terrorism, banditry and kidnapping. He said, quote, we will stabilize this country, we will secure our country and we will make Nigeria peaceful because we believe time has come for this country to enjoy peace, restore order and rule of law just like any other country in the world. He however appealed to all Nigerians to join hands in restoring peace to all parts of the country, maintaining that the task is that of all citizens as well as friends of Nigeria. Mr. Ribadu was the pioneer chairman of the EFCC and was previously appointed special advisor on security to the president, Bola Tinubu, on June the 15th this year, before he was announced as NSA four days after, in a shake-up in the country's security architecture that saw to the replacement of all the service chiefs, the inspector general of police, among many other changes. Meanwhile, the acting controller general of the Nigeria Customs Service is promising to leverage on the opportunities provided in the recently amended act of the service to curb smuggling, as well as increase revenue for the nation. According to Mr. Adewali Adeni, some of the provisions of the act promote innovation and the use of technology to enhance operations of the service. He was speaking shortly after his assumption of office in Abuja today. Meanwhile, the act in custom CG has been decorated by the vice president. The Acting Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service arrives the premises of the service in the company of the former head of the organization, retired Colonel Hamid Ali. Retired Colonel Hamid Ali reviews the guard while the new helmsman watches. Remember the guards into the country! Done with the parade review, they proceed to the conference room of the service, where senior officers, friends and family members were on hand to receive them. Both the outgoing and the incoming controllers general make their speeches. And I'm one of the most happiest per person today that I'm handing over to somebody who knows the road and the obstacles we have gone through to be where we are today. So for him, it's just to continue from where we have, we've st we have stopped. If a controller general comes and finish off everything, there will be nothing left for incoming controllers general to do. Uh, what is left for us now would be to build on the foundation, the solid foundation that you have created for us, and consolidate on some of those progress that we have recorded. 
Now to the purpose of the gathering, the handover from the old to the new amidst chairs. Next is a meeting with the senior management of the service. The acting controller general lists priority areas. In today's interconnected and technologically advanced world, we face emerging threats that require our utmost attention. E-commerce, global supply chains, and transitional criminal networks pose challenges to our role as custodians of trade facilitation and enforcement. When we asked about the specifics of how he will tackle smuggling challenges, this is what he said. There would be a lot of consultations. Uh, there would be a lot of uh, uh, meetings. We need to have a shared understanding on all these issues. But what I have said initially is that I would be emphasizing a lot of consultations with stakeholders. Uh, we are going to engage very, very critically with our, sh our stakeholders. And we are going to use innovative technologies to drive everything we are going to do. Earlier in the day, the acting controller general of the Nigeria Customs Service was at the presidential villa, where he was decorated by the vice president. The acting customs boss plans to keep Nigerians abreast of their activities in the service in the days ahead. This is just as he promises to remain impartial in the discharge of his duties. Various reactions have continued to trail the demolition of structures by the new administration in Kano. Some residents of the ancient city today gathered to condemn the action of the Governor Abba Kabir government, which is alleging that the properties were illegally sold by the previous administration. Today's protest follows an earlier demonstration by some residents in support of the decision by the government. Meanwhile, the Kano State Governor has announced the formation of a committee of inquiry to receive complaints before proceeding with further demolitions. Our correspondent Sadiq Ilyasu has more. The demolition exercise undertaken by the Kano State Government has been drawing actions from various quarters. The latest is this peaceful protest by some concerned youth. Taken to the streets with black hats and banners, the protesters urged the state government to halt the ongoing demolition exercise. This demolition has cost our people a lot. Many have lost their jobs and businesses are seriously affected. The demolition is not good for the development of Kano State. What do they want our children to do since they have demolished their shops? This has to stop. Earlier, another group had come, taken to the street in support of the actions of the governor. According to them, this is what is needed to clean up the metropolis. I would like to congratulate all our commissioners. Incidentally, Governor Abba Kabir chose to inaugurate his cabinet today. One of the first he did after that is to set up a committee of inquiry to listen to complaints before any further actions taken. We have set up a committee of inquiry. All we are waiting for is for the swearing in of the commissioners. And if it is done, so we are expecting them to start listening to the complainers. They will advise us on how best to handle the matter. No time to delay. The committee is set to commence its work immediately. The, the, the committee cannot take off without the executive council. So it just has like a draft. So now that the executive council is formed, so maybe um, it will be brought to the executive council for the deliberation, necessary correction and so on, or let's say improvement, then it will, tell, it will take um, the course of action. The announcement of the committee of inquiry has brought a sense of relief to the owners of the buildings marked for demolition. Sadiq Ilyasu, Channel's Television News. Those involved in child trafficking in Taraba State may face tough times in the days ahead. This is because Governor Agbu Kefes is warning that culprits of the act, as well as forced labor in the state, will face stiffer penalties to serve as a deterrent to others. The governor was speaking when he visited the UMCN orphanage where 37 trafficked children are taking refuge after being rescued from their abductors. 
Taraba State Governor Agbu Kefers is visiting the United Methodist Church of Nigeria Secretariat in Jalingo, housing and orphanage, to have a first-hand information on the state of the rescued trafficked children handed over to its administration by the former governor. A total of 157 children are taken refuge. 37 of them were rescued from a trafficker in 2020 by the police, while the remaining 117 are orphans. They identified Lao, Gashaka, Bali, Donga, and Karim as some of the local government areas with such cases. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, however, says the parents were deceived and have successfully done family tracing to 35 of the rescued children with a view of reuniting them with their families. We have invited them already here on ground and we have already spoken to our partners to assist us get funding for them. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Women and Child Development, reveals the agreement entered into by the previous administration with the orphanage as he appeals to the new administration to allow the victims complete their examination before uniting with their parents. If we are to stay here, we need, uh, that is, uh, the UMCM orphanage home need something for the experience upkeep before the expiration of that day, that is 31st of uh, July. Worried by the cases of child trafficking in the state, the governor says the offense is against the law and his administration will clamp down on offenders of child trafficking, forced labor and abuse in the state by ensuring stiffer penalties. He gave an express order to allow them complete their exams beyond the contract expiration date of 27th June. Nobody should take them out of this place until they finish their exam. And when you want them to leave here, let all the parents or people that are responsible, that are threatening, let them come and let these children identify them. The day these children are going to leave here, I want to be present here. As the children pray for the success of the governor's administration, it is expected that government will engage more relevant agencies, especially security operatives, to come up with better measures to address the growing trend. To matters in the oil sector, former Minister of State for Aviation, Transport and Aviation, Mr. Isa Yuguda, has accused the NNPC Limited and past administrations of complicity in the mismanagement of fuel subsidy, which he described as a scam. The former governor of Borja State, who was a guest on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily, believes the subsidy regime should have been stopped as far back as 2010, but for vested interest and the lack of political will. And everything about uh, the subsidy uh, regime and then the scam in the subsidy regime was discovered by my committee. And uh, of course, since then, uh, uh, you know, recommendations were made which unfortunately were never implemented, and it's very sad. Uh, I'm sad to uh, um, let Nigerians know that from what I saw, we came across situations where subsidy was claimed on pipelines that never existed. You just claim that they have pumped X amount of, uh, you know, uh, either finished products or crude, maybe from Kaduna, I mean, for worry to Kaduna. Those that pump and those that are in the subsidy scam, they just fill papers, invoices, and they claim subsidy on it. In fact, there was an instance of a pipeline that uh, was supposed to exist between Lagos and Worry. And tons and tons of monies were collected on subsidy on a pipeline that never existed. This is Nigeria for you. But I thought they were telling us that it is uh, marketers and some other persons who they are perpetrating are, the they fraud. Are, they are so all, NPC is involved. They are all involved in these things. All of them. Oh. All of them. And I must say, I sadly also report that, you see, uh, Nigeria subsidy, if uh, it's uh, that part of it that is actually goes for the subsidy, hmm. we go on subsidizing sub-Saharan Africa and Central Africa. In part two after the break, federal government suspends construction work on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway for six days from tomorrow to allow for free flow of traffic on the road during the Eid al Kabir holidays. Do join us again. 
If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live from Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. We will stabilize Nigeria, restore order and rule of law, with vows former EFCC chairman Nuhu Ribadu as he assumes office as the national security advisor to the president. Newly appointed Acting Controller General of Customs promises to intensify the fight against smuggling and raise the revenue profile of the country. Protests trail demolition of buildings and other structures by the Kano State Government. Governor Abba Kabir sets up committee to receive complaints over the actions of his administration. And leader of Wagner, a mercenary military group, denies trying to overthrow Russian President Vladimir Putin. To the south-south part of the country, where the bodies of three medical students who drowned during a boat cruise in Calabar, the Cross River State capital, have been recovered. According to the Cross River State Police Command, the bodies were of two males and one female. Their boat had capsized due to leakage, leading to their drowning. Speaking in Calabar, the Cross River State capital, the Commissioner of Police explained that the corpses were recovered following a joint effort by the locals and the security operatives in the state. to the southwest where a gas explosion in the Agege area of Lagos State has left four persons with varying degrees of injuries. The blast, which occurred in the early hours of today, was set to have emanated from a gas shop following a leakage from one of the cylinders. According to the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, La Sema, rescuers were able to contain the inferno from escalating to adjoining shops and nearby buildings. La Sema's permanent secretary, Dr. Femi Okeosoyitolu, explained that Although no life was lost in the incident, the injured persons, three males and one, or three females and one male, suffered second degree burns and were taken to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital Lasuth for treatment. It appears the Nigerian military is poised to clear its name over its alleged involvement in oil theft in the country as it takes the battle to the creeks of the Niger Delta, where suspected unrepentant militants carry out oil bunkering in Bayel's state. In a statement, the Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onyema Wachiku, explains that troops of five battalions operating under 16th Brigade Nigerian Army raided a camp at Azuzuama community in the Joe local government area of Bayel's state yesterday and captured an armory used by the suspects to carry out their nefarious activities. It says five AK-47 rifles, two rocket-propelled grenade bombs, four rocket grenade bomb chargers, 14 AK-47 rifle magazines and one pump, pumping machine were all recovered during the raid. He added that their camp was also destroyed. A former leader of the ex-militants, Mr. Asari Dokubo, had recently accused the Nigerian military, especially the Nigerian Navy, of being behind the oil theft in the country. However, the military authority responded to Mr. Dokubo's allegations, challenging him to mention the names of those involved. The federal government has announced a stoppage in construction work on the Lagos end and other parts of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway from tomorrow till July the 2nd, with workers expected back on site on July the 3rd. This stems from the heavy traffic flow being experienced on the Lagos Shagam route in the last couple of days, which is expected to increase during the festivity. According to the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, Mrs. Olukurede Kesha, other factors being considered include inclement weather conditions. She says this will allow travelers easy passage during the Eid holidays and minimize the discomfort for them. The gridlock on the Lagos end of the expressway has been a daily experience for commuters, forcing them to spend hours in traffic and being exposed to attacks by robbers in the process, especially at night. All right, let's head to the nation's capital as we take our stories from uh, the uh, nation's capital, of course, of Abuja. Victor Mathias is standing by. Well, thank you, Ayo. In order to, from Abuja, in order to guarantee strong and accountable institutions of government, promoting citizens' action for transparency and accountability in the management of public resources is crucial. 
Well, this is according to the Deputy Director of the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, Mr. Kolawole Uluwadari, who notes that considering the challenges currently faced by Nigerians, it is pertinent for citizens to actively engage and participate in governance by holding government to account. He was speaking at a workshop on promoting citizens' action for transparency of public resources in Nigeria. This event is a continuation of the advocacy drive that Seraph has been undertaking for a while. And the aim is to empower citizens, uh, community leaders, to take on uh, the fight against corruption by advocating for transparency and accountability. And you would agree with me that those are key aspects of governance that we need to drive a democracy. And so the aim is for them to understand that the good work that Seraph has been doing, of course, cannot be left alone to Seraph. People, citizens, need to be able to take charge of these uh, demands for transparency and accountability and so the aim is equip them, with, equip them with necessary tools and of course to understand that we are viable partners in this regard. That is why we have such capacity building uh, activities uh, like we have uh, going on today. Doing this uh, with the previous administration so it's a continuation but much more importantly with what we've seen with the rising level of inflation, yeah, unemployment is rising and the activities of government including the re uh, removal of uh, subsidy, there is more, more money that, uh, at this time for people to demand transparency and accountability in the use of public resources, knowing fully well that doing that or not doing that on the part of government ultimately affects the citizens. Well, following allegations of financial impropriety against the immediate past governor of Zamfara State, Mr. Bello Matawali, a group under the aegis of the Voice of the Voiceless today protested at the headquarters of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Abuja, demanding his probe and immediate arrest. The protesters urged the EFCC to reopen its earlier investigation into the former governor's tenure, which was aborted because of the constitutional immunity clause protecting him while in office. The president has assured stakeholders that his administration is fully committed to the fight against illicit drugs and substance abuse in the country. President Bola Tinubu's message was conveyed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. George Akume, at an event to mark the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Drug Trafficking in Abuja. Also speaking at the event, the Director of MTN Foundation, Mr. Dennis Okoro, pledged that the organization will continue to partner critical stakeholders to help eliminate the scourge. The theme for this year's United Nations International Day against drug abuse and illicit drug trafficking is people first, stop stigma and discrimination, and strengthen prevention. It was chosen to amplify the need to encourage substance abusers to come forward for rehabilitation. The special guest of honor at this year's occasion is President Balati Numbu, who is represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume. He is confident that the war against illicit drugs will be won because the government is ready to give relevant agencies the needed support. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives and the Chairman of the NDLEA align with the position of the government. We will tackle the drug menace and its associated consequences in all forms and I therefore call on governments, international organizations, civil society, and all stakeholders to take urgent actions to, pro to protect people by tackling the problem of illicit supply and abuse of drugs. We are already doing a lot, but we expect you to do some more. And we are here as those who have the power of the pause to look at your budgets and see how we can encourage you to do more. To do more. Strengthening prevention efforts involves implementing evidence-based strategies, promoting early intervention, and providing comprehensive education to equip individuals with the knowledge and skills. For the MTN Foundation and its partners, the fight to rid the country of illicit substances must not only be sustained, but ramped up. What we are doing is not to get rid of this program. We create awareness, let government take it, organizations should take it, including families. The number of drug seizures that are 
done by NDLEA on incoming um, uh, uh, drugs are quite concerning because we all know that we only will uh, basically be able to um, seize a certain small percentage of what is actually being trafficked into the country. One of the highlights of the day is the handing of laptops and iPads by the NCN Foundation to winners of the annual inter-secondary schools quiz competition from Nasarawa, Edu and Adamawa states. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria becomes first country in Africa to adopt the financial reporting standards as the Financial Reporting Council and NGX officially launch IFRS 1 and 2. Well, that's in business news. Do join us again. Welcome back. You're still watching the news at 10, coming to you live on Channels Television. To education matters, the management of the Regent Primary School, Abuja, is applauding the rigorous inspection process by a team of British schools overseas commissioned by the UK Department for Education to inspect and accredit British international schools outside the United Kingdom. The proprietress of the school, Mrs. Amza Abdul Razak, says the school remains committed to quality education that meets international standards. She was speaking in Abuja at an event to celebrate the 2023 report of the British Schools Overseas Outstanding School Award conferred on the Regent Primary School. It's a moment of celebration as the Regent School Abuja celebrates the British Schools Overseas 2023 report as a BSO Outstanding School in Nigeria. The proprietress of the school receives the award and then speaks on the outstanding school rating by the British schools overseas and the vision of the school. The management of the Regent Primary School received this award with modesty and in appreciation of the commitment of our dedicated staff and the cooperation of our supported parents. I'm extremely delighted to announce that our objective of being a top class school has been achieved with this resounding compliment. The director and other officials of the school believe the British Schools Overseas report is a reward for hard work. We had moved in the late 90s, I think about 97, 98, to Abuja from Lagos, and they just weren't satisfied with the schools that were available in Abuja for their children to go to. And so they started their own school back in 2000, and 23 years later, here we are achieving and, you know, uh, maintaining excellence throughout. The inspection gives us the quality seal that what we're doing here is equal to independent school standards in the UK. What it means is that to be now standard, it means that you have progressed from, me, from not being an inadequate school and not being just a satisfactory school or just a good school to an outstanding school. The British Council insists quality education remains a top priority of the British government. So we want to say first, um, the British Council works with um, the Regent Secondary School, uh, which is uh, part of uh, the group of schools of this um, uh, organization, and they have been one of the most valuable, uh, one of our most valuable partner uh, in Nigeria. With 35 schools in Africa and five in Nigeria regulated by the UK Department for Education in England, the affirmation of the Regent School as the best in Nigeria for offering excellent quality of education in teaching and learning, curriculum, governance, among other criteria, places the Regent School on the list of the 10 best British schools in Africa and the Middle East. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to Ayo for the rest of the news at 10. Many thanks, Gloria. That was Gloria Amizio K from the nation's capital, Abuja Studios, and not Victor Mathias. Anne Wilder will be standing by to give us the very latest in the world of business. Thanks a lot, Ayo. Hello and welcome to Business News. The Financial Reporting Council of the Nigeria and NGX Regulation Limited have officially launched the first two IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standards. The launch held today in Lagos and it marks a historic milestone as it makes Nigeria the first African country to adopt the financial reporting standards. According to the FRC, 
This is a testament of Nigeria's commitment to responsible and sustainable business practices. The IFRS 1 and 2 are expected to provide a global baseline of sustainability disclosure that meets the information needs of investors and enabling companies provide comprehensive sustainability information to global capital markets. And hope may soon be on the way for vehicle owners in the country who are facing various challenges caused by removal of fuel subsidy by government, especially the high cost of petrol price. And that's because the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria says that it plans to make loans accessible to them to help convert their petrol or diesel engines to gas, which is more affordable fuel alternative. The managing director of Gas Analytics and Solutions, Brian Amonu, made this known to Channels Television and our Business Morning program earlier today. And while Nigerians are still reeling the impact of the unification of Forex on the economy, the Director General of the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, Mr. Adewale Smart Oyuride, is calling on the federal government to ensure a balance in, of the act to further stop the appreciation of Nigeria's currency. Mr. Smart Oyuride made the call at a briefing with journalists today in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. What like, um, the domestic equities market has opened the first trading day of the week in green. Laddie Williams has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Well, first trading day for this holiday shortened week kicks off in the green with all share index up um, today. 0.22%, that's what we're seeing. Uh, after closing positive um, yesterday. So it's 59,338 points for the all share index. Market cap, 32.30 trillion naira. Let's look at the activity chart now. Uh, you see it's uh, volume. That's down compared to what we had last Friday, but we see more volume of uh, value there. 13.1 billion naira. That's uh, the worth of stocks traded today in the market. Deals, 8,000 level, new level for deals. Um, right now, let's look at the sectoral performance. Uh, we see oil and gas 0.52% up, and we see banking, big move up there, 2.40%. So it's big moves we're seeing in the market um, today. Buy interest in stocks like Boa Cement, financial services stocks. We're able to counter the loss we saw with MTN Nigeria, allowing the bulls dominate. And that's how your money performed today. At the local boss, I'm Ladi Williams. That's Business News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues now with Ayo Tsundee. Thank you so much, Anne. Coming up next on the News at 10, leader of the mercenary military group Wagner, Evgeny Prigozhin, has posted an 11-minute audio message where he denies trying to overthrow Vladimir Putin. Please stay with us. Welcome back. The leader of the mercenary military group Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has posted an 11-minute audio message where he denies trying to overthrow Vladimir Putin. Mr. Prigozhin also denies agreeing to sign a contract with the Defense Ministry to end the so-called mutiny, which started on Friday after his forces suddenly left the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut and marched towards Moscow. Here's Simon Pusey with more on this and other international stories in around the world in Vogue. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The leader of the mercenary military group Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has posted an 11-minute audio message where he denies trying to overthrow Vladimir Putin. He also denies agreeing to sign a contract with the Defense Ministry to end the so-called mutiny, which started on Friday last week. It's after his forces suddenly left the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut and marched towards Moscow. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, who is thought to be the target of Prigozhin's anger, has appeared on camera for the first time since the uprising, 
although it is not immediately clear where or when the visit had taken place. EU countries have agreed to increase the maximum size of the fund used to finance military aid for Ukraine by 3.5 billion euros, raising its ceiling to over 12 billion euros. EU sources last week said the bloc's top diplomat, Josip Borrell, had asked governments to raise the financial ceiling on the European peace facility, which has already allocated some 4.6 billion euros in military aid for Ukraine. Minister. Jens Stoltenberg says Sweden and Turkey will convene a high-level meeting in Brussels on the possible accession of Sweden to NATO before the alliance's July summit in Vilnius. It comes hours after Turkish President Tayyip Recep Erdogan told NATO's Secretary General that Sweden must stop protests by supporters of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party in Stockholm before getting the green light on its NATO membership bid. I spoke yesterday to President Erdogan uh, and uh, uh, I'm also in contact with uh, the Swedish and the Finnish uh, government and we agreed to convene a high-level meeting in Brussels before the summit. This meeting will include foreign ministers, heads of intelligence and national security advisors. The aim is to make progress in completing Sweden's accession to NATO. Sudan's paramilitary rapid support forces say it has seized the main base of a heavily armed police unit. Video footage posted by the RSF showed soldiers inside the unit celebrating in front of tanks and weapons inside a warehouse. Since late on Saturday, fighting had surged in the three cities that make up the wider capital, Khartoum, Bari and Omdurman, as the conflict between the army and the RSF enters its 11th week. Officials in Myanmar say they have set fire to $180 million worth of seized illegal drugs and conducted a ceremony in Yangon to mark World Drug Day. According to state media, the destroyed drugs were seized across the country, but no specific data was provided for the list of drugs or the locations at which they were seized. The United Nations' latest report said opium cultivation in military-ruled Myanmar jumped by 33 percent last year, reversing a six-year downward trend. Wowee! <laughs> Drone footage has captured the moments when a curious humpback whale followed a kayaker and swam alongside them in the waters at Bondi Beach in Sydney. Crazy. I don't even know if this guy knows. Mate, do you know there's a whale just following you? Right out front on the beach, really close. Drone pilot Jason Iggledon captured the footage. A record 5,092 whales were spotted from various points along the New South Wales coast as part of an annual census conducted during the migration season. And brave couples have competed in a wife-carrying contest at a Scandinavian midsummer festival in Burnaby in Canada. That wasn't very successful. The team members, identifying as husbands, had to carry their wives or a friend through a course filled with obstacles. Friends Eric Blyder of Ukraine and Anna Stonkovich of Russia completed the course in the fastest time and were awarded Stonkovich's weight in beer for coming first. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Welcome to Sports News. I'm Chris Elams. Reigning world record holder to be a Muslim believes she can run the 100 meters hurdles in under 12 seconds if the bars remains at the present height. A Muslim set the current world record of 12.12 seconds at last year's World Championships returns to the track on Tuesday at the Golden Spike Meet in the eastern Czech city of Ostrava. The reigning Commonwealth champions wants the herders to stay at 84 centimeters of height despite an ongoing debate on raising the bar to give priority to techniques over speed. All your state and the other state have emerged winners of the 2023 National Wheelchair Basketball Championship held at the Alaki Sports Complex in Abilkuta, Ogun State. 
Oyo State thrashed a Lega State 10-1 in the men's final to claim the title, while in the women's category, Delta State urged Oyo State 3-2. Organizers say the championship was an opportunity for the players to get a platform to represent Nigeria at the African Games in Accra, Ghana, next year. Players this year, we have our national coaches here, and we have international coach that is in Africa here, Coach Adoki, to spot for new players, to spot for great talent. After two weeks of resting, they are all going to camp. We want to be one of the first people to be in camp because our dream is to go to Ghana and qualify for Paralympics in Paris 2024. And to do that, you need to put so many effort. We've, we've identified where and where we've had issues. Now we want to go work it out and make it work in our favor. That's it on Sports News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chris Lenz. Thank you so much, Chris. And the main news again. The former chairman of EFCC, Mr. Nuhu Ribadu, today assumed office as the National Security Advisor to President Bola Tinubu. He vowed to help stabilize Nigeria, restore order and the rule of law. Newly appointed Acting Controller General of Customs today promised to intensify the fight against smuggling and raise the revenue profile of the country. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde Balu from all of us here to have a good night.